Good afternoon guys, Tony back again, Horrin Todd, you hope you're all well. Friday afternoon here in the UK, it's the 18th of February and we all know what that is. Here, Leatherface, just behind me there, so it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre Day. Uh, Netflix have brought out a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, um, straight to Netflix, not the cinema this time unfortunately. But um, I thought I'd do a quick review on this, guys. I've just finished watching it. I've just come back from work, so I couldn't watch it early doors. But I thought I'd give you my thoughts on it. As you know, if you follow my channel, thank you. Um, I'm a big Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan. I, do, I don't mind all the films, to be fair. And the original from 1974, Toby Hooper's classic, is the greatest horror film, in my opinion, of all time. I just absolutely love that movie. I can watch it any time. So I was really interested to see what they've done with this new take on it and um, how they've brought it sort of into, you know, 2022, what they've done with the story. And I just thought, found it quite interesting to see if, it, you know, it needed a, a direct sequel, which this one is, to the 1974 version. So it sort of discarded all the other ones, so part two, Leatherface, next new generation, next generation and, you know, and it's just gone straight from 1974 version to this one, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So obviously it's a brand new film from 2022. This one's produced by um, David Blue Garcia, directed, sorry. And it's produced by Fede Alvarez. So when he produces something, you know there's going to be a lot of uh, blood and guts. If you remember um, the Evil Dead remake that he did, what, which was fantastic. Loads of blood and gore. He's really, uh, he's got that down to a T. So, I'll tell you a bit about this one, guys. Um, it stars uh, Mark Burnham as Leatherface. He plays a really good Leatherface. And you've got um, <clears throat> Isley Fisher in this as well. Um, and Owen Foray, who plays Sally. So, um, yeah, Sally's back as, you know, from the original. It's 50 years on. So I don't know how old Leatherface was meant to have been in the original. Let's say he's 20, uh, even though he looks a lot older. He does that say he's 20, so he's probably, yeah, about 70 in this. But he's still a massive guy, and, you know, he's big, and he's, I don't know what how tall he is, probably 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and, you know, 20 stone in weight. He's a big guy. Looks really menacing, really good. I really like the, the look of Leatherface in this one. So what happens is, guys, these guys by this uh, Texas small town that's been abandoned for years. And they're sort of doing this um, social sort of project on there. They're going to get investors to sort of uh, buy parts of this town and then make it into like their own community. So it's got like a lot of social aspects in this one. You've got like, um, you know, of lot of walks of life you've got like race um culture it touches touches on inner city violence and even like school shootings and stuff like that so there's quite a lot in this you know you've got a couple of backstories to a couple of the characters and then they've gone there and the, you get this bus full of guys who are investors who come to basically have a party on this on this town of harlow in texas and sort of look around the place and see what they're going to do with it. So you've got like a couple of like guys who are sort of the, the main characters. Then the other guys on the bus are just in the background. They don't really do a lot, to be fair. There's no sort of story about them. So basically, it's, it's a silly story, really. Like they, they buy this town and they're going to do it up because they don't want to live in Texas no more and bring the kids up in with inner city violence and stuff like that, basically. And... Um, Essentially, Leatherface is lurking in this town. Now, I know in the original, we didn't see... We saw Leatherface at his, at his house um, with his family. Um, but this one, he's sort of hanging around this town, which which hasn't really been touched on in any of the other films. Probably the, the nearest one to touch on, like, a town and sort of a location like that is probably Texas Chainsaw 3D. But this one, yeah, it's set in this town, and it's quite... You know, the set design's pretty good. And um, Leatherface is sort of lurking in the shadows. And then something tragic happens. I'm not going to get into it. And then basically Leatherface goes on a killing spree. 
and um, yeah, some of the, the best gore um, I've seen in a long time in a film, to be fair, the gore is fantastic, um, there's some brilliant kills, the first kill, you'll know if you've seen this, is my favourite kill in the film, but there's um, there's some head smashing and um, with hammers and you know, guts being torn out, heads being chopped off, and I mean, you think, I thought Halloween was brutal, um, you know, Michael Myers, but Leatherface just takes it up here, you know, he is really, uh, he is really brutal in this, guys, and like I say, the gore, probably Fede Alvarez's um, influence on this film is, um, yeah, on point, and as I say, it's just basically about a day and a night, and it hasn't got a real... Texas feel about it like the original and some of the other films where you've got that hot dry dry heat of the desert and it, you know the sweat it's sort of a bit overcast I don't know if it's like it's meant to be set in the winter and all the sort of poppy fields are dying I really like the the poppy field setting um that was you know really cool design and um yeah you actually get a storm at night so there's like a really really bad like sort of thunderstorm you know, we're in, in, in Texas, I suppose it's more dry heat and, you know, everyone being sweating. So that's a different different take on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise in my eyes. I've never seen that before. And, yeah, essentially you get these guys and they've got this sort of workman who's a bit of a Texan with a gun and stuff. And he's sort of trying to do this town up for them. You know, that they want him to sort of be the handyman, but he's a bit of a... A rebel without a cause, you know, he's got a big truck and stuff, so he's polluting the earth and all these, you know, do gooders are saying stuff about him. But a lot of the character development, there is quite a bit in this, guys, but you don't really, I don't know, I didn't really feel sorry for any of them or sort of, you know, interacted with them personally. I don't think there was the greatest characters in the world. Um, and Sally coming back, she come back, and I thought she was going to be a lot more involved, but. No, she was just sort of there as a as a side character. Didn't really say a lot. It just said like um, she hadn't talked about what happened to her 50 years ago and Franklin and stuff. You know, she hadn't talked about it to anyone and she'd been looking for a leather face for the past 50 years and she'd sort of been a, a Texas Ranger. That's what she was. And, you know, she, she ends up coming back to this town to try and help these guys uh, hunt down Leatherface and and sort of kill him once and for all because you know she's got a lot of history there with him and uh, but it doesn't really touch as much as what i thought it was going to on that you know i think it was let down a little bit on that if you're going to talk about storylines i know uh, there isn't you know it's a horror film so the storyline doesn't have to be perfect you know but um yeah that could have been expanded on more i think and the character development of some of the characters i thought could have been i don't know better portrayed and not as i don't know hip and trendy as they needed to be and a little bit more grit if you know what i mean but all in all like i say i'm not going to get too much into the story guys i thought it was when i saw the trailer um a few weeks back i thought oh, is it going to be really tongue-in-cheek and really um a comedy horror and there's only sort of really one bit of tongue-in-cheek in, in if, if you've seen the um trailer you'll know in the bus um, that's a little bit bit cheesy for me, but it was still cool. There was lots of blood and gore, like I said. But uh, apart from that, it is really a quite dark and serious film. It's got quite serious tone to it. So, yeah, don't don't think of it as you know from the trailer thinking oh, this is going to be like a comedy horror. Uh, like I say, I think Leatherface, Mark uh, Burnham, done a done a great job um, as Leatherface. I just didn't get one thing. How he how he kept his uh, skin face on, which he cut off someone in the film. I don't get how he done that. It just showed him put the face on and then running around everywhere. But oh well. But he was menacing. He was the brutalist, brutalist leather face leather face has probably ever been as any any character in probably the last ten years in film. I don't know. He was he was really brutal, guys. He was just. But he had a, he had a lot of heart in this one, whereas before. In the original and stuff, he was portrayed as sort of like a, um, I suppose like an animal almost, with no feelings, no no mind. In this one, he had sort of a heart. Um, you know, there was a there was a few things 
I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to spoil it. I've said no spoilers. There's a few things that he does where you think, oh, and I felt more for Leatherface than these characters. I just wanted him to, you know, take all these guys out because there was just, yeah, just imposing, really. Um, but, yeah, all in all, guys, I think it was uh, for a Netflix film. I don't think it would have done very well at the cinema or anything like that. I don't think it was um, a cinema cinematic spectacle, you know. Maybe the noise and stuff. Um, which was a decent soundtrack. He didn't have an, many of the sort of, you know, them sort of winces with the with a violin. What's known for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? The, I don't know how to do it, you know. But they uh, didn't have many of those in. There was a few, and at the end credits, there, there's a, there's a few in there. Um, but keep keep watching the end credits right to the end, guys, because you get like a a bit of an Easter egg at the end. So I don't know if there's going to be another film or what, but you know, there's a bit of an Easter egg there. So the gore was on point. All you gore hounds and slasher fans, if you if you're into just your gore, you're not really bothered too much about story. Which I I I can be invested into stories in films and really slow dramas or just straight up slashes, which have got no point to them. So I, I really enjoyed this for what it was. Like I say, not a patch on the original, or maybe not as good as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, remake, uh, or probably part two because I do like eighties cheese, but. Um, I don't think it's the worst that's ever been made. I think it's sort of in the middle of the film. So I think it's um, decent. And I could see me, it's only about, I don't know, 80 odd minutes long. I could see me turning it on a few times and just, just watching it out or with a few friends. So I thought it was a cool enough film for a Netflix film. Like I say, it wouldn't have been the massivest budget. But I thought what they've done with the gore and stuff, fantastic. That's, the gore and stuff outweighs anything else in the film. I think it was fantastically done. I just, yeah, really like the gore. So for us gore hounds, um, brilliant. For us gore hounds, probably 10 out of 10. But the film, are probably six and a half, somewhere like that. So not the greatest film in the world, but as a spectacle, I, I really loved it. I, I enjoyed it, guys. So, yeah, tell me if you've seen the Tex uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Netflix film from 2022. What you thought of it, um, if you didn't like it, if you did like it. If you think I'm stupid for saying what I do, or, or if you disagree or agree with me. But I just really like the spectacle, and I'm just glad we got one. You know, did we need another film? Probably not, but there we are. We always get them, don't we? So we may as well watch them, and if you can take something for it and have a good time with it, why not, guys? So, I've been Tony, guys. Um, like I say, get in the comments. Tell me what you think of the new one, and uh, I'll catch you all for the next video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.